Welcome back to the Inside Star Citizen Review here. We're here with the family tonight. We're, we're a little late. You guys on YouTube are probably going to get this on Friday. But I'm telling you right now. Oh, thank you for that follow, CP. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, dude. Welcome to the fam, dude. He's here. He's got good taste. He wants to chill out with the fam. He wants to watch. And without further ado, let's just get into this. We got an 11-minute video. We know that the sweet spot, we know that the sweet spot that we like is around 15 minutes. So this is just shy of what we normally like. But last week's episode, it was just shy too. But I felt like last week's episode was pretty damn good. Let's watch here. And let's have a good time. Boom. Wait a second. Can I just say that already I'm kind of enjoying the atmospheric of uh, sounds, the audios and the the audio in my headphones, uh, uh, kind of lit me up in my no no spot. Okay, back to back to inside Star Citizen. Oh. Wow, we got some sexy Banu here. I'm really looking forward to like different alien tech ships. Like the more alien ships in the game, the, the happier I'm going to be. We talked about this. I leaked the actual ship out. You can only put it in the hangar for now. I don't know if there's any update on this particular information. If you're able to fly this yet, the two cockpits, one's an engineering, one's your pilot and, uh, you know, obviously weaponry. So to me, this looks pretty hot. This actually looks pretty hot. I'm down for Banu Tech. I like the fact that this focuses on like teamwork. I like that this ship, the way that it's designed, is kind of like a tandem uh, ship. Uh, it reminds me of what the hell was that Star Wars ship that had the two different cockpits? Maybe somebody in the in the Star Wars department can put that in the comments. But let's let's keep going here. Okay, we're seeing the inside. All right. Oh yeah. My no-no spot is is a light. Life in the verse is one full of choice. Do you adhere to the law of the area, following regulations and mandates, ensuring a peaceful existence? Bucha has got it. The best in police flyer. I think that's right. I think you're right, Bucha. For you and your fellow citizen, or do you flaunt a blatant disregard for common society and blaze your own path across the stars? For both. It looks like Jared's getting in shape. I got to follow suit, man. Like, you know, I've been trying to get on a health kick. It looks like Jared's uh, losing a little pounds. He's getting ready. He's getting to get ready to get hashtag more professional. Now we got the lighting very similar to the lighting that we just had on the stream prior to this video. For those that were alive on the stream. Damn. I don't know here. I feel like I'm copying off of Jared right now. Both sides. Alpha 3.7 allows you to share in the rewards with your friends. But for those of you who choose to live outside the law, you may find both additional challenges and exciting new opportunities. Mission sharing is important for many reasons. One of the most important things I can think of is that we have multi-crew ships, and if crew on, you, on board your ship cannot see the same things that you're seeing, then you have to communicate like verbally, which is not ideal. It also means we can create so many I'm hearing pretty decent things about the sharing the missions, about sharing missions together. I'm hearing pretty decent things from uh, Avocados. And um, I'm telling you, they definitely are going to need to look at like bumping up rewards. It's one of the things that I'm hearing about the um, the rewards on the mission sharing because you split 6,000 two or three ways. Not so great. So they might need to restructure the reward system for missions. I would I would personally hope that they do many more in-depth missions or even just harder missions and the but excited excited about the fact that you can between everyone the reputational rewards are given to the individuals without sharing without splitting that up which means that if you invite like a criminal friend to do a good mission they'll benefit from the kind of positive virtue for that grants them and vice versa if a criminal friend invites you a good player into you know a criminal act you'll be you know your, your reputation will be hit because of that good you are prohibited from landing at this facility so for 3-7, we're introducing um, restrictions to various landing zones uh, based on your crime stat. These restrictions will apply in locations that are lawful. 
such as LSR and landing zones, major landing zones. You'll find that there are semi-lawful locations. Bucha brings up a good point. He says, now here's the interesting thing and a question, is this limited to only to missions or all actions? Right now, this is only for missions like that I know of. I, I, I think that we can only incorporate like sharing rewards with missions. And this is what I talked about a week ago. I think a week or two weeks ago, where what what I think is the most important thing right now for the game, this is going to sound silly to a lot of people, but I really think this is going to be an important uh, feature or mechanic in the game, is to actually get going on making wallet-to-wallet -wallet transactions. Am I the only one that thinks this way? It, it Shouldn't it be an easy thing for, for Cloud Imperium to do to make wallet-to-wallet -wallet transactions? You know, player-to-player -player interactions become more seamless when you have wallet-to-wallet -wallet transactions and you're able to just give somebody money rather than the beacon system, which currently right now is the only way you can kind of transfer credits. And I know that this is planned into the future, these wallet to wallet transactions, but I think that the faster that they can get these wallet to wallet transactions out there and, and playable in the game, I think the better it's going to make the game because instead of like these beacon systems, which are really screwed up, you got to be in space and you got to accept them out there. You got to find them out there. Then only then do you get the money. There's 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 uh, the, the chances that somebody else is going to accept these beacons and then that money just basically gets lost, which is a broken game feature. They need to make wallet to wallet transactions happen as quick as possible because you've got a lot of people in general chat when I'm playing the game. They're like, hey, I need Need help with like escorting my shit boom okay you do great shoot me over half give me 50% I'll charge you like 6k I'll, start, I'll charge you 10k relative on what you're ever what, what you're transferring shoot me over half I'll, I'll escort you if I fail you only owe me the half if if I get to the other side with you great uh, then shoot me the other remaining difference and and that that is new gameplay that wasn't in the game that makes the game much more fun to play. And what you end up happening, what that is content creation. Giving the ability for players to do these things in the game literally just created more content without SIG having to do much other than just making wallet to wallet transactions. Just saying, just saying. I think that future, I think that future RSW should be now. I think that that is something that is going to be on the high priority list for me. I would absolutely bump that up to the forefront. I think the quicker that you get that type of gameplay into the game, that, that it's going to be an instance where you're going to see more people logging into the game because now all of a sudden there's going to be the ability to have much more fun with other people in the game, period. Okay. Off that range. Such as rest stops and Levski uh, that will allow you to land with a crime stat anywhere up to uh, level three. Obviously, unlawful locations such as Grim Hex will allow you to land no matter what. And the reason we're doing this is because we want to make criminals have to live life on the run. You'll find that lawful stations such as Olisar and landing zones will turn you away if you have a crime stat of Thank you, Wolf. Uh, one or more. You can obviously still land there illegally if you want or leave your ship floating outside and get into the station that way. But you just won't be able to store your vehicle there. <laughs> so we've added a new mission for level five wanted criminals. The reason we're doing this is because uh, we, we had a lot of feedback that you know once you get to level five, that you know, there was nothing to do. <laughs> The is you are basically given once you become the lowest possible life form of criminal that you can be yar there needs to be a lower level of of, of debauchery there are various reasons to go out and hunt the navy the navy's hunting you at the same time i'm gonna have to deal with a lot of this with my the type of gameplay people. obviously if you have crime stat five friends they can share that mission with you you probably will need to share this mission because it is so difficult. You will also be being hunted by bounty hunters at the same time. So good luck to you. When the moment that was awesome. And, and this is a, this is some fun, a great talking point. I've we've had this discussion in our discord, actually. And Booch is talking about the buy rent system mechanic. And I won't get too far into this because obviously it's not in this particular uh, episode. But we were talking about like how we think that ship sales are going to be affected in 
you know, real life ship sales, actual dollars being spent where people are pledging for ships. We're wondering what's going to happen to that. The more available that ships have become due to the rental system. Uh, it could kind of go either way, in my opinion. Right. It could it could go really bad for SIG and you will see like the funding drop because people are like, hey, now I can get in any ship that I want in the game. Of course, I think that the, the SIG will only release a certain amount of variants of ships and they're not going to like offer the whole gambit into the rental system. Uh, so there will be some ships that, that are just off off limits and they won't put in those kiosks to rent. But on the other hand, some people think that like increasing the availability of ships will also uh, inspire hire other people to be like you know what i really like this ship i'm going to buy the ship so i'm going to wait to hold judgment on that i've got my own theories as to what i think will happen in regards to uh you know the actual real life money being spent but i'm going to hold off till i see a little bit more data i'm really interested in seeing what will happen either way i'm really interested in seeing what will happen because that's the, that's the fun for me i love a dy dynamic economy. This is what I'm fighting for in Star Citizen. And decisions like we're seeing like this, introducing ships to be rented, is exa exactly the stuff that I love in real life because I love looking at that data. I love seeing what happens to the numbers when new decisions are made. And also the type of gameplay that I like in an economic uh, kind of gameplay environment. I like I like when they're like player-driven uh, you know, circumstances that have actual consequences to them. So I, I would only say this in closing that that particular topic. That Cloud Imperium is very early on with the economy there. It's like super infancy stages. But I hope as they continue to work on this, that they'll put a little bit more player driven mechanics into the economy for the very uh, example that I gave you guys. All right, let's watch, let's watch. It comes that you find yourself face to face with an aggressor without the protection of Stanton's landing zones or your own spaceship. The weapons you carry with you as you journey the Star Citizen universe may be the only thing that makes the difference between successfully defending yourself and waking up yet again in another easy hab. And with Alpha 3.7, we're expanding the customization options for your FPS weapons with a new line of attachments that will allow players greater versatility than ever before to write themselves a successful conclusion to any first-person encounter. <laughs> so today we want to take you through the new weapon attachments coming out for 3.7. Just keep in mind that these are a work in progress, but we're wrapping up on them right now. So we've got the entire suite of them here at the moment. So as you can see, this is a full new collection of attachments that we've got. Here we've got the compensators. Anytime I see a table like this, it always makes me feel very Matrix or very John Wick. Like I, I something about just like just splaying out different types of weaponry and attachments always gives me that kind of kick ass feel on almost every action movie I've ever loved. It's a wonderful presentation. It does something to my heart. So you'll notice that all of the barrel attachments the do come in three sizes. <laughs> As a general rule for the barrel attachments, we have the size one for that's a great small point. Caliber weapons like pistols and SMGs. That's a great point, RSW. The size twos we use on rifles, <laughs> LMGs, Pirate. and sniper rifles. And the bigger size three one we have for shotguns. These three here, these ones are used for ballistic weapons only. Yeah, I do enjoy. We have the I do enjoy when the when they're talking to the devs and you can hear the positivity come out. Like when they when they're when they're positive, right? It's nice to hear the developers being really into their work. I like that because a lot of times, you know, some of these some of these episodes, and trust me. We've been doing this now for quite a while and we're watching and we're like, Jesus Christ, this, you know, like it, it feels the, like the guy's voice is monotone. There's like no emotion in it. And you, and you think to yourself like, Jesus, like, <laughs> like this is the guy working on this. But this guy and, and some of the others uh, that, that we've gone over in, in the past uh, that you can feel, you know, you can feel that positivity. It's always nice. It's the always nice. Energy stabilizers here. We've got two sets of silencers, one for energy weapons and <laughs> one for ballistic weapons. And we have the flash hiders as well. These are our two underbarrel attachments. We have a laser pointer and we have a flashlight here.
Yeah, this is a very PUBG concept. You know what they're doing, and and uh, this is one of the features in PUBG that I actually really like is all the different types of attachments that you can put on your weaponry. And so, like, I'm I'm very happy that they actually have different attachments with with uh, these weapons. I would have hated if they didn't. You know, the scopes need a lot of work, though. The scopes still need a lot of work. So we the accuracy, some, uh, not the best. Attachments last quarter that I'm sure you've all had to play around with by now. Those were the uh, one times red dot sight three times holographic sight, the four times um, telescopic sight, and the big eight times telescopic sight as well. So we've reworked these because the, the previous art was actually just kind of like a quick implementation to get in to actually get the functionality working and get everyone playing with them. This is a brand new set of art, and we've added two more options in as well for some additional magnification options and styles. So I'll actually go through some of the functionality and use them on the rifle range now. So what we've got now here is we've got the P4AR, We've put a silencer on it, we've put a flashlight attachment on it. They're getting better at presentation too. You know, they're taking a tip from DG here. They're taking a tip from my channel. Like, the more in-game type of, like, uh, presentation that you can do, the better the vibe. I like the fact that they're bringing this guy here and they're like, okay, here's what we've got. You could do a whole, you could do a whole channel like this, just on weaponry, you know? Where, where you're a dude in the game, you're like, hey, this is a... Uh, this, this, today we're going to talk about shotguns, you know, <laughs> and then like have all different shotguns and it would be great in the future if you had the ability to have your own personal space like this, you know, that would be wonderful. Hey, Rave, welcome to the, to, to the show tonight, dude. Um, great app, by the way. Go check out Rave's Galactic Logistics, a plug for Rave, because I'm telling you, it's wonderful. Welcome, Exoneer. Welcome to the fam, dude. You got good taste, man. But anyhow, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, it would be great to have like our own personal spaces eventually. Like this is what I imagine the future. I want to have a basement like this with a gun range. I want to have guns being able to on gun racks galore. And I want to just sit there and I want to make content for you guys and be like, today I'm going to fire off my very large uh, BFD. <laughs> like what's a BFD? I don't know. You're going to have to figure that out. Right, and we've put the new four time scope on there as well. The flashlight is intended to be used as a combat flashlight. The combat flashlight is more designed to focus in on a longer range target in the dark or to use the blinding effect that we've put on there as well. This is our kind of like first pass on the blinding what? effect. So you get a nice corona there. That's a little too much. A wait, little wait, 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 wait. I hope that gets, I hope that, what am I looking at here? I hope they do something with this. That's a little too much flare. That's a little too much flare. Okay, hold on. That's just a little too much, though. When you're in a combat scenario. We also have the suppressor as well, which at I, the moment... I like what they're trying to do, but that is way too much light. I think Pooch is right on that. <laughs> okay. I dig what they're trying to do. I just think that was, like, scream out loud, sh just like, Ah, the flashlight, motherfucker! <laughs> okay, okay. I'm just saying... <laughs> <laughs> I know, but like, it's it's a little unrealistic. That's a little too much, don't you think? I don't know. Just me. Just first, first. This is why we do this show because you guys like my reactions, or some of you guys hate them. But this is this is another reason why we do this show. Besides the communication, we we just love to watch myself react to things. First off, remember the remember when they first revealed the new three hundred rework, and I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and everybody got so pissy. There were a lot of people that agreed with me, and there were a lot of people that disagreed with me. This flashlight thing, though. I'm not sure about the flashlight. I like the concept of the flashlight, but I'm just not sure that that light was realistic enough. Like, it was just like, boom, in my face. I felt like I was staring at the sun. I don't know. It's mostly an audio change. This weapon and all the other weapons. And now I'm giving away one. <laughs> right, here. Right. audio for the compressor firing sounds. So now we have a new weapon from a brand new manufacturer called Hedeby Gunworks, and this weapon is called the Salvo Frag Pistol and it has some pretty special functionality on it. As you can see, it's a pretty heavy looking pistol here. <laughs> Did you just say it's a 30th century flashlight, E-Red? <laughs> yeah, this is pretty slick, this one. This is it futuristic. I like the futuristic look on this one. Ammunition like the Coda does, so you kind of know what to expect there in terms of damage and feel and how big and heavy this is. It does uh, look a new pirate. The unique thing about it is that this is currently only ballistic weapon that actually has a charge mode on it. 
A charge so mode ballistic. Be. Did I hear that right? A charge mode ballistic weapon? What's the charge for in a ballistic weapon? Show off what that can do. So yeah, as if you kind of just go for single shots, it's kind of similar behavior to the coda. You get reasonable accuracy at quite a few different ranges here. But the unique thing about this weapon is if you charge it up, we inject some freezing primer into the chamber and we get some little hammers come out here. And when we let go, the hammers crack and we get a little shotgun blast. So you've got a closer range option. Uh, I'm not quite sure I like that though, Pirate. I know you're going to be disappointed. Pirate's going to be like, but I really like it. I'm not quite sure I like that. I'm not quite sure. I, 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 I think I don't like it. I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't think I like it. Pirate's like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I like what they're trying to do. I like that they're trying to make it different. And the design is cool. But how effective, right? I guess I guess I'm going back to my old school F FPS vibes, right? It's like I wonder how effective it will be. If it's very effective, maybe it'll change my mind. Maybe it'll change my mind. You could blast someone's leg off with that. <laughs> I like the concept of a shotgun pistol, says Erad. But I'll stick to my arc light pistol. Um, I I hear you. I hear you, pirate. I do like I do like what they're trying to accomplish in the design of it, but I just I'm going I'm going straight to like effectiveness and they like honestly the 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 sound of it needs to be a little bit more impressive like the audio from it. If you're going to do that, let's let's rewind a second here. I just want to hear what it sounds like in that like OP mode primer into the let's chamber and we get some little hammers come out here and when we let go the hammers crack and we get a little shotgun blast. So you've got a closer. It was really quick. Like it just needs to be maybe a little bit heavier. If if we're adding additional like uberness, right? The audio needs just a little bit of a like a little, just give me a little bit of sex from my weapons. You see what I'm saying? Am I right or am I right? I think I'm right on that one. Just give me a little sex from my weapons. That's that's what I love about weaponry. A range option there as well. <laughs> what am I saying? Okay, Give so just to that. remind you, the demo that we've shown today is work in progress. Yeah, we're going through all the final iterations <laughs> right now, all the final balancing changes. So what you've seen might not necessarily translate to exactly what you're seeing. <laughs> Damon, you're I need like that dude. And on that note, I hope you enjoy using all these new attachments and this new pistol in 3.7. At the heart of Star Citizen is your ability to create the characters that you want and fly the spaceships that you choose. And with Alpha 3.7, we aim to improve both, like making the character customizer more user-friendly without losing any of its impressive capability while expanding the power. Okay, the character customizer currently isn't too impressive. Okay, so I'm hoping that the upgraded uh, character customizer is going to give us what we want. Um, I'm not quite sure that I'm also, what do you guys say in the comments too, as far as the character creation screen that you get into? I think it's a little sloppy now. I'm hoping 3.7 kind of smooths things out and I, and I hope that the amount of like different looks that you can get, uh, are thousand fold. Like as far as I'm concerned, they need to be so detailed with the character creation screen that literally there will never be a match except for like the the occasional uh you know <laughs> you know twin that you never knew that you had like i i think that the character creation screen is actually a lot more important than people think i, I really want it to be much more fluid and smooth it's one of the first screens that you see as a new player playing the game right you know, so a lot of people don't don't think about that when thinking about the character creation ability is like this is the first screen that new character or that new players to Star Citizen will see. They they get the package, they log in, they want to go into the PU and the character creation screen is like the first first impression that they get. So hopefully they really kind of they, they polish it a lot. Uh, it needs a lot of polish. Power to earn ships in game to rentals, which will provide players with a greater opportunity than ever before to discover which ship is the right ship for you. Okay. Oh, we're good. We're getting into it. Good. Good segue, DG. That's a good job. Thank you so much. 
So some of the feedback that we got from you guys that we wanted to try and address for the character customizer are things like, I don't really quite understand these head slots or how the percentages work between the multiple heads that you actually have to choose from. So now we don't even show those slots anymore. All you do is just cycle through the individual heads that you want to take features from and you just slowly select a feature, whether it be clicking on the head or from the actual menu on the side of the screen. Pick your feature, pick the heads you want to bring stuff from, slide the slider up, and you'll see your final head actually take shape right in front of you. Okay, so, so they're essentially, all right, so essentially what they're doing is before we had the two heads on either side or the ability to actually choose two different characters and and do this, and now what? That they're, they're only going to have one slot, or is there an additional slot that you're going to be able to to move these? Players, uh, Butchus says, players found this system confusing and wanted to know what these sliders did, so we took them out. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, E-Red says, I remember a long time ago, Chris envisioned the character creation mode and said it would be like entering a bathroom. And you go to the female bathroom for female and male. I remember this, dude. I actually remember him saying this. And you go to the bathroom and you go to the female ba uh, female character and male bathroom for male characters. And then you would look at the mirror and that's where we would customize our characters. I think that'll still be in the game eventually. I hope that it does because I think that's a great way to be introduced into the game. And they need to look at that, Erad. That's, that's absolutely right. I forgot that that was actually stated. That was stated quite a long time ago. Um... RSW says, I was expecting a better UI. Uh, still looks extremely bad, says RSW. Uh, Jiro says, you're going to blend from all the heads, uh, says Jiro. Thank you for that uh, clarification. Um, and then Bucha says, you know, mirrors are hard to do. Uh, and so I'm not, I don't know. I, I don't know if I feel like maybe I'm underwhelmed. Clear about how to do it, oh, wait, how wait. It works. We're clicking Making on our nose here. Cleaner and easier to use doesn't actually take away from any of this functionality for the customizer. So we're really excited for you guys to play around with it. I'm going to wait. I'm going to, I'm going to wait to give like my final judgment until I'm in it and I'm playing it. And I'll probably do a video on this. And, it, and, and in the video, I'm going to mention these things. Cause I think these are really important things. Uh, to mention is as far as like your first impression of the game usually in most games is a character creation screen in games that offer you that that uh, option a much easier time creating characters in our game now so as you know we've already got the ability to earn uec and buy ships within the game but we've added one more feature this quarter that's going to allow you to rent them for a short period of time what it does is it really gives you an opportunity to, to feel what some of these ships can do before you actually Oh, oh we talked about this. Uh, Erad and I just had a talk this morning about the uh, ship rental pricing. And uh, before we said, wow, the ship rental pricing is astronomical. And we, you know, Erad and I both had a lot of fucking lashback from that when we said that. There was a lot of kind of, uh, in my term, and if you fall under this category, apologies, but I'm going to say it right now. There were a lot of people with kind of an elitist mindset that said, hey, you know, I love these high prices because basically, I think when it comes down to it, they didn't want anybody flying anything they paid real life money for. I think that's really what that comes down to. And Erad and I got uh, a lot of heat from that, a lot of heat from saying that the prices were way too high. Now, interestingly enough, with the new patch uh, that's being tested right now, it looks like rental prices went the other way. And in my opinion, I think they went to the extreme cheap end. And now Erad and I are kind of like talking about this together privately saying, you know, like we're giving our reasons for I'm giving reasons to Erad why I think it's a little too cheap. Erad's telling me reasons why he thinks it's a good price right now. So that's kind of funny. So it, it, yeah, he's like, yeah. <laughs> but maybe well, we should do a video on that, e -Rad. Maybe we should do a video on that. should allow you to tailor your rental of the ship to I get you. I get, you I get it. I get it. For the time that you need it. You got a one day, a three day, a seven day. And I'm a glad that they're doing currently. it. And, you know, beyond pricing and everything, I'm glad they're doing this. Like, this is a step in the right direction for me. When a developer actually starts making these available in the game for the credits in the game, essentially free ships i mean if you think about it you got to put your time into it to grind to get the ship to rent, to be able to rent it but as a gamer i'm happy that they're doing this i think this is a step in the right direction because now they've said okay okay we're going to start putting this in the game for you guys rather than just make it the only way that you can fly these things uh or are uh, you know buying them outright with real life cash now of course this was implemented in arena commander uh for for quite a while so this is actually something that we've able been to do, uh, been able to do in arena commander uh with the uh, REC being able to rent them so this is 
just something that they've taken and applied it to the PU. And I think it's a great idea. I actually, I'm, I'm happy and I think it's a step in the right direction. The point is, is that you can rent the ship for as long or as little as you need. <laughs> just because I can see the Spectrum chat winging right now. It's real world time that you guys are going to be running these for. So you get it for the entire time. Uh, ship insurance is covered just as normal, right? So anything you do, you want to go steal somebody's ship, they're covered. If you want to blow your ship up, it's fine, it's covered for the period of time. Uh, once that time period elapses and the next time you log out, ship will be taken away. This will be expanding as we get more of our loss system and our rental system up and, up and running, but uh, that's how it's going to work for 3.7. Should be a lot of fun for you guys. With that, we bring our summer season of Inside Star Citizen to a close. But we'll be back on October 24th with more behind the scenes access to the many aspects of Star Citizen's development. And don't forget to keep an eye out for Alpha 3.7 as it journeys from Ivocati to PTU and then into the hands of players everywhere. To our subscribers, our continuing thanks for making this show and others like it possible. And to everyone in the Star Citizen community, join us tomorrow as we talk Star Marine and the new Good Doctor map on Star Citizen Live at 8 a.m. Pacific. Until next time. I'll be checking that out. Hopefully I'll be home and watching with you guys. That was uh, pretty interesting. I really like the way they opened up with that Banu Defender. I really like that. That felt good. And it was nice seeing the attachments on the weaponry. Overall, I'm not quite sure I'm going to be happy with the character creation screen. I'm going to hold off my judgment on that until I'm actually playing the game and, and trying it out for myself. I'll probably do a video on that. But guys, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something right now. Let's give a hand for our audience. Always super respectful. It's nice to have a community in which you have people of opposing viewpoints and being able to sit down and just talk about something that that you're into or that you're not into together as one amazing, amazing community. Thank you, guys. I'm serious. Like it's this is so rare in this star citizen community. Like this is such a rare thing. So it's really nice that you guys uh, took the time to, to be here with me and with one another. Thank you for joining us here on this inside star citizen review. And of course, uh, we're not going to have another one for a month, but that's OK. I, I'm still going to make the content like I always do. And I will see you back here um, uh, October 24th. And of course, I'm starting to stream in the morning. And we, we just had a really fun uh, morning stream that went four hours the other day. And uh, I will be doing more of those now that the kids are in school. So thanks, everybody. Uh, my time is all over the place. So bear with me. But I really appreciate you guys. And uh, thanks for all the love and all the support. I will see you on the next vid or the next stream, guys.